In this video, we're going to explore some of the different kinds of projects we can analyze with this incremental analysis. So the first uh, decision, should we accept an order at a special price? We can get some extra business from a major um, uh, customer if we give them a special price, right? This assumes that selling of these products are not going to uh, affect any other markets, right? The markets aren't going to change. It also assumes that the company is not working at full capacity, right? So we have to be working at less than full capacity. So here's a project or an example. We produce 100,000 blenders. 80% is our plant capacity. So we're under capacity as far as production. Variable manufacturing costs are eight bucks an hour. Fixed manufacturing costs, 400,000. Again, roughly that's $4 per unit. The blenders are normally sold directly to retailers at 20 bucks each. Now we've gotten an order from Kensington to purchase an additional 2,000 blenders, but they only want to pay $11 per unit. This is a pretty substantial dip in the price. So should we affect or should we go through with this proposal and sell these additional blenders? So let's see how this works. Well, if we reject the order, of course, there's no revenues, no cost, no impact on net income. But if we accept the order, revenues will increase by 22,000. Costs will go up by 16,000. So this final column here, we have to really look at what it's asking us for. It's asking us for net income increase or decrease. So um, if we increase revenue, that's a positive number. If we're increasing cost, that's a negative number. So again, if you add 22,000 and 16, negative 16,000 here, we end up with net income increases by $6,000 if we move forward with this project. So obviously we should accept it, right? So that's the idea here of incremental analysis. We can identify the relationships between one or more projects, right? We don't, we can do this compared to other projects as well. Next, what about a make or buy decision, right? So in this case, we produce our own ignition switches for motor scooters, or we can choose to buy the switches from somebody else. So how should we do this? Should we do this or not? What we find out is the purchase, the ignition switches, it's going to cost us eight bucks a unit to buy them. Right now, if you look at our cost, 50,000 in direct materials, 75,000 in direct labor, variable overheads, 40 grand, fixed overhead, 60,000. So that's $9 per unit. So at least on the face, it seems like, well, maybe we shouldn't do this because we're going to, uh, uh, the cost, excuse me, the cost of making them is $9 but we could buy them at $8. Should we do this or not? Well, let's see what happens. Here's our direct materials, right? So these are all costs. So 50,000 minus zero, right? Because we're not going to make it anymore. Income increases by 50,000. We're not going to make it anymore. So we're going to save that 75,000 in direct labor. Variable cost. We're going to save that $40,000. Now the fixed manufacturing overhead, if we make it is 60,000, if we buy it, it's 50,000. So again, that's still an increase in uh, net income. But what's the difference in revenue, right? The cost, if we, if we make it ourselves, there's no purchase price. But if we buy it, we have to pay 200,000. So that's obviously a decrease in net income. If you add these up, we find out that if we purchase the product, 
it's actually going to cost us $25,000 more in net income. So we should not. We should keep making them ourselves. Now, have we taken everything into account, right? Does this give us a true picture of what's going to happen to the company? We've mentioned this in some earlier videos. Is there any collateral damage that could be done? For instance, what are we going to do with these people? If we buy it, that means we don't need this labor anymore. Are we going to lay people off? Are we going to have some kind of turnover? How's that going to affect us? So this is sort of what we refer to as an opportunity cost. There's going to be an impact to the company, right? From taking one thing over another. In this case, it's going to be the loss of jobs. Maybe some turnover is going to be affected. So again, let's assume that if we buy these switches, these employees that used to make the switch for us, we'll be able to put them at work doing something else. And they'll create $38,000 in additional income. So that income or that expense that we're not paying for them to work, we're not going to lose these employees. They're going to generate more revenue for us. So under the first episode, or under the first uh, example, if you will, let's zoom speed fix just a wee little bit so we can. Sorry. So if you look at this, we have what? Under the first proposal, if you remember, we said it was going to cost us $25,000 more if we purchased... Oh. If we purchase this, these uh, um, items rather than make them ourselves. But if we can increase our revenue by 38000 now what? That increases our income. Now, if we can uh, purchase the product, right? I mean, that loses money for us, but we're going to replace that with another project, if you will an opportunity cost to make more money, we actually can turn this into a positive event. So if we think those two things could occur, the project in general now turns out to be an acceptable project. Should we sell something as it is, or should we process it further, right? It costs X number of dollars to do a certain amount of production. But if we do it a little bit further, we can make another product, and that other product has a higher selling price. So what is the advantage of getting the higher selling price for the product? So here we can make tables. The cost to manufacture is $35. Selling price is, uh, is $50 unfinished. We have some unused capacity. And if we would finish the table, we could be able to sell them for $10 more, 60 bucks a unit. Direct materials go up by $2. Direct labor goes up by four. Variable costs are going to increase by $2.40. No change in fixed uh, manufacturing overhead. So for right now, we see the way we have a $35 manufacturing cost per unit. Should we do this project or not? Well, here's the sales price per unit. $50 unfinished, 60 finished. That means we'd have an increase of $10 if we would uh, uh, finish this product. However, direct materials go up by $2. That's an increase in cost. Direct labor goes up by $4. Variable manufacturing overhead goes up $2.40. No difference in manufacturing overhead. So the total change in cost is $8.40. We increased revenue by 10. Then we had to take into account the changes in cost. So the net effect is we have $1.60 is the net income per unit if we produce a little bit further.
So how does this work if we have these multiple product cases, right? We can choose, we, we buy some, in this case, we're talking about raw milk, right? We buy milk, there's a common process to get it ready for production, and then we can decide what to do. Do we make cream and then further process it to get cottage cheese? Or should we um, make skim milk, right? And take that skim milk and create condensed milk. So which one of these steps should we do? Or, you know, maybe in the end we could figure out how to uh, proportionalize this. So we make, you know, you know, of, of all the milk that comes in, 50% uh, goes in the cream, 50% goes in the skim milk. But of this cream, 50% of that goes to cottage cheese and 50% of the skim milk goes to condensed milk. Now we have four products that we could be looking at. So let's look at the cost. This is for the cream. So the joint cost was $9,000. If we want to process the cream into cottage cheese, that's 10 grand. So the revenues per day, cream, we get 19,000. Cottage cheese, we get 27,000. Should we take the cream and convert it into cottage cheese? So we put these side by side, we see what? Here's our differences in sales. If we process it further, we'll gain $8,000, but the cost of production is $10,000. So the net effect is if we uh, convert the cream uh, to sell the cream and process it further, right, into cottage cheese, we'll actually lose $2,000. So in this case, the answer is do not further process the cream into cottage cheese. But what about the skim milk example, right? So the joint cost of the skim milk is $5,000. The cost to process it into condensed milk is $8,000. And the difference is in revenue. Skim milk all by itself is $11,000. The condensed milk, we can earn $26,000. And what should we do? Sales per day, we see that there's an increase of $15,000 in sales. There, but there's an increase in cost. That increase in cost is $8,000. So the net effect is, or the answer is, we should further process the skim milk into, um, into the condensed milk because we will gain $7,000 in income from that process. So again, those are just a couple of techniques or questions we can answer with this um, incremental analysis. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.